Okay, so we're learning how to add media to your site. So media, video, um, audio, stuff like that. So, um, for example, here's a video that I added to my site. Um, when you go to the page, the video is playing automatically. I set it to be like that. Okay, so I could stop it. Hi. Um, here, this is audio, so it just has like audio controls. Okay, and then this is a YouTube video that, whatever that is, um, they don't let me play it on their site, on my own site, but um, it's a YouTube video that I went to YouTube, I got the code and I put it in my site. As you mentioned, the first one is something like that you have on your personal computer. Exactly, yeah. And it's not It's from embedded, somewhere else. right. It's not like pulled from somewhere else. Okay? So, um, let's go to the way I do this is I'm actually even going to open up my code for that page and show you. I'm going to take this out because we learned this already. Okay. Um, is that? Where's the, the shorty thing in here? This is my code. Oh, here. I see. Okay. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to do, let's say I'm starting a new file, right? So I just add my HTML tags. I make my head and in my title, which is like that tab on the top, I'll call it media. body. In here I'll add a h1 title called adding media to my site. Okay. And then I'm going to save it. I'm going to make a new folder. Um, website day three. Create. And I'm going to save it as, let's say, media.html. Okay? This is your index. Really so, your really, index. it would, let's say, be my index. Um, like, or I could link it to my index page when I create my index page. Uh -huh. For now, it's just like a snippet of HTML. But it, it works without index. Um, index just means go to me first. So, like, when a uh, browser is looking in a whole folder of all the files, it will show the index page first instead right of... Right now we're opening it anyways in the browser. We're anyway itself, opening it in so the browser from the file, so it doesn't make a difference. Um, so the first thing I want to do is let's say add this video to my site, right? So I already... you If you want to add a video to your site that's like not from YouTube or maybe or something, you need to have the file of your video. So I have that. I have like an actual MP4. Um, videos come in different formats. The one like that's most supported for web is MP4. There's also OGG and something else. Um, maybe WMV. Video formats supported in web. WebM. OGG and MP4. So if you want to be really proper, you take one video and put it in all three formats and then put them all on your site and then the, whichever format the browser supports, it would show that one. So that if someone's viewing in a browser that only supports MP4, that one would show. If someone has a browser that only supports .ogg, that would show. But you want to see all three at once. Right. Hi, come in. We have a new seat over here. Um, 
It wouldn't show all three at once. If it supports all one. three of them, it would just show whichever one. Whichever one. It won't list yeah. if you're still writing it on the page? No. No. Um, so, um, so I have MP4. MP4 is the most supported. Most browsers support MP4. Um, and if you need to convert a video, like let's say you have it in .wmv or something, um, I have... Um, I have like Adobe program, so if you have that, it has something that could convert it. But you could always just like Google convert WMV to MP4, and um, there's some like you convert online, whatever. There's different like programs for that. Anyway, so I have this MP4. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my this is my website folder over here, website day three. I'm going to add it to my favorites. I'm going to make a new folder called media. The same way I have a folder called images, I'll make a folder called media. And I'll put it in there. Right? So what would be the link to my video? Media slash animals. Right. Media slash animals.mp4. Okay? Now, what I do is um, I do... Sorry, just yeah. um, so I'm gonna actually open up my textbook because I always <coughs> I'm never actually manually adding it. Okay, so I do I use the video tag. Okay, that's the video tag. Inside the video tag, I put my link, and this is how you do it. Source. I don't know why they make it so long. Then. SRC equals the link to my video. We'll add it in. And then you have to say type equals video slash mp4. Okay. And what it's saying is I have a video. Now I'm telling you the source. Source meaning the link equals whatever. So in my case, it's media slash animals dot mp4. What type of file is this? It has no idea. It knows it's a video, but it doesn't know if it's mp4, ogg, webm. So I say it's video mp4. So if you're putting in a few different formats, how do you do that? So if you're putting in a few different formats, um, you go like this. Video it's not going to show it three times. OGG, right. And it would be animals.ogg. Right? Um, that would be it. Within your video tag. Exactly. So you can save it in your media file, all three versions. Right, and all three would go in your media folder inside here, right? Um, so, for now we just have our MP4, right? So let's take a look at that. And right now it's not playing. So that means... Um, that first of all, I need to add in controls. I think that's why. Let's try that. Oops. Or it could be because that was in Safari. Let's see. Yeah, wait, one second. Did I open that? Right now I just opened it in Chrome. And I think before I opened in Safari. Oh, okay. So basically, no, forget what I just said. Basically, before you add controls in, like the video is there, but it doesn't, there is no way to get it to play. Because, because it, there's no nothing telling it to play, and there's no controls on the video for you to press play. So once you have controls on the video, then I have this little thing here where I can press play, right? 
what if I want it to autoplay as soon as I open the browser? Then I took. Sorry, just take out controls for a second. Then I go to add an autoplay and save. And now it's autoplay. But there's no controls because I took them out. Now, what I usually do, do is I do both. Yeah, I just wanted to show you. And here it would be both. Okay. Um, now, that's video. Audio is pretty much the same thing. So, usually audio is in MP3 format. So, I have a little song here, an MP3. I add it to my media folder. And the way you do audio is audio, um, let's see, I didn't even write it here. I'm assuming it's the same thing. Let's try it. Source, source equals media slash song dot mp3 type equals audio slash mp3 Let's see how that works not showing up now let me try it with controls because I didn't tell it to show controls so it could be on the page there we go since I did controls now I can see this little bar my audio. And the same thing, if I wanted to autoplay, now I have both going on at the same time. Okay. Any questions on that? Is there a way to have one play right after the next? Um, one, you would have to create a playlist and then you would have to make the setting that it goes from one to the other. So if you just want music in the background of your site, then you would just take off controls and it would just be playing the time? Right. You just do autoplay. What? You just do autoplay without the control, basically? Right. Yeah. And where, where would you put the item? Anywhere? Um, so it would be, you would be like using CSS to like let's say you mean like let's say I would want this a full banner in the background of my site. You, you just want music like when you come inside music. You don't want them to oh. be weird. Like, so you the, you could use CSS to hide it. Okay. Like and you would do the code is like display none and then it would be on the site but it's not showing. Or you can just do autoplay. Or you could not do the control. Or you could even do this. Right. Oh look. Like, right. You could just do this. If you just do autoplay, let me take off this autoplay so it's not. It's still there. It's still there. It's right next to it. It's still there. Right. But you could use code, um, CSS code to like make it not take up space. Right. Exactly. But I don't know. I don't even know. Like, what if I would add? Another video right after it would it be like side. Like well, side anyway, side? a video I think starts a new line. Oh, I, I think so. Like, let's say I had another audio. It's actually a good question. Probably it would take up space. Like, look, I add another audio. And then the last thing is if you're pulling from a different site, so like um, YouTube and Vimeo are two main places where people will post their videos and then you, 
you don't have to worry about like actually hosting your video on your site. The video is already up and you're just basically putting an iframe of the video in your site. Like the same way we did an iframe of Yeshiva World News, so you're doing an iframe of, of their video. And there's really two ways to do it. One, you can do an iframe and one, you can actually just like go to YouTube. Yeah, I'll show you. I'll show you again. Let's say I want to show the Shweki video, right? So, um, basically, on every YouTube video, if you scroll down, you no, know, share. share, and you go to share, right? This is the link. It's like you just want to share the link, and you go to embed. See, it's not letting me embed it because it's like uh, they, they have, they don't want people to, um, what's it called? Embed their video in other people's site. Let me see. It probably doesn't let either. Oh, he does. Okay, yeah, so basically they have the code for an iframe. They have the code for an iframe already set. So you could basically just copy this code and paste it into your site. It's basically saying iframe. Iframe means take something else and put it from a different site and put it in my site. Width, mean, and height is how wide and high you want and you can adjust that. Source is just the link to the YouTube video. Frame border, do you want a border? This is zero, so no. And allow full screen, meaning if someone presses this, would it go to full screen? So it just comes with those automatically. And now if I say <coughs> that, I'm getting Um, how do I get it to autoplay? Um, I'm sure you could. YouTube iframe autoplay in my site. I think someone asked me to do that once. Like was when let's say like I do this for my client, right? And they're like, okay, it looks great, just make it autoplay. I, I don't know the exact code for it. Um, I stack overflows in very good Oh, I think you do. Right. Um, informational site. Right. You probably use it a lot. Yeah. So if, sometimes it's too, like you can delete too, too say, Cody they, for me. They say, right. They say right. real things. So stack overflow is a site where people post their questions about like coding and technology and then other people answer just to keep up like knowledge about technology. So, um, so a lot of, yeah, so if I see an answer in Stack in stack Overflow that works. So basically I just clicked on a link that seemed to be answering that question and I scroll down to where I see someone answering it and I see um, that they added autoplay equals one at the end of their link. So I'm gonna try that. One. Let me try that. Before where? The oh, so I don't think this quotation mark is the end of the link. Yeah, that's why you see if I put in two, it shows red, meaning there's a mistake. Apparently that did not work. Um, works in Chrome, but not Firefox 6, but not in Chrome 22. And we add autoplay. That's what they say to do. I don't know why it's not working. Oh, question mark? Mm. You're supposed to add question mark autoplay. Let's try that. Here we go. 
So when you're Googling, like don't give up right away. Just keep looking. Usually you just like it's a matter of code. So a lot of times you got it right, but you're just missing one or two things. Okay. Um, and that's it for for media. Um, so like for example, Rory on her site has Vimeo videos. These are Vimeo videos. Um, in general, it's much harder to have like to host a video on your site that's like not a YouTube video because then you need to have it in all three formats and everything and different browsers, whatever. Usually like Vimeo and YouTube are already have all these like built-in supports for all browsers so it's easier to just post to upload your video to YouTube and then post go to that video and embed get the link and embed it in your site. You know, and usually you can hide your video from other people being seen. So really you could just do like a workaround, post all your videos on YouTube, not let anybody else see them and right. then and like right. just use it to be able to Right, like the course videos, I make them private. For now, they're just unlisted. Like, they're not public. But then, I, at the end of the course, I make them private, and then I just share the links with you. Uh, but yeah, it's the same thing. Like, you can make them private. Like you and you don't share them with anybody. And right. Like, even, right. like, someone else can't see them. That right, or sometimes you want people to see your videos on YouTube, and you also want them on your site. But if you want to do it, let's say, just to get them on your site. Right, right, just to get it on your site. To, like, make it easier for you right. to converting all formats. Right. The only thing is for people with filters, um, right. like, for people with filters, then... Um, Are you able to see YouTube, basically? Then it, it, won't, it will be blocked, even though if you have a video on your site, it might not be blocked. Because um, some filters just automatically block YouTube, but they don't block like videos on sites. So that that's just something like if I've had people who had like more like yeshivish businesses, then they tell me um, not to do not it. to do it on YouTube because they have that type of clientele. But even nowadays, like everyone, like most videos are on YouTube. Like Yeshiva World News, most of their I think their videos are YouTube videos. Um, yeah, so that is that is that for media. Um, oh, and I said I would show you iframe. Iframe is basically just saying that um, you're adding, like you're showing something from a different site on your site. So like I could even show um, this site in my iframe. I could say iframe source equals poloandfree.com, close iframe, and I could put in like a width. And then that site is in there and acts like a mini site in your site. So that's that. Um, okay, so the other thing I'm going to show you today is how to make a form. Okay, pretty much every website on the contact us page that says, get in touch, we'd love to hear from you. And then you have a form with like name, email, um, etc. So for example, this is what we're gonna build today. A form like this, right? So in a form you have different types of fields. Anywhere where someone can enter information is called a field, and the whole thing is called a form. Okay, so these are just regular text fields where people are adding text. This is called um, checkbox fields, where people could can check off. Right. Um, this is called a select field where there's a drop down and people can select. And this is called a text area. It's like a bigger area where people can type. Okay. Um, so if I'm making a form, oh man, save it as form.html.
how to make a form. Okay. So the tag for like the whole form is called form. Okay, so you start with that. Okay. Um, and then you can start adding your fields. So let's say I'm building this, right? So the first thing that we want is name. Now, this is just a regular um, label. So I need a label on my field so people know what to add in, right? So I'm just gonna make a name wrapped in the P tag. That's what this is, okay? Now I need to add this field. To add a field, um, the tag is input, and it doesn't have an opening and close because it's just like an entity, right? There's nothing inside. Um, and then I need to say type, and it's a text field, right? Text. And then what I need to do is I need to name it. The name no one sees. No one sees the name. The name is not this or this. These are the labels that you add in. The name is for you to know in the back end what this field is. Because what happens? Did you ever, does anyone ever wonder when you submit, like let's say I fill this out and I press send, right? What happens then? Where does it go? Doesn't go to their email? Yeah, so it goes to the person's email saying hi. I mean, it could really go wherever you want. It's up to you, right? So you can decide to send it to a database. You can decide to send it to like, let's say their Google spreadsheet, whatever. You can link it to whatever you want. But the standard easiest way to do it is to send it to someone's email, right? So when I get an email, I'm gonna have to code this somehow that when I get an email, I know that when someone fills out this field, it's the name field and it's not the company field. Okay, so that's why I say name equals, and then I could call it whatever I want. Um, I'll just call it, let's say, your name. Okay, um, then let's say I'll do the next one. Um, so email, so I'll call it email. I'll say input type equals text. I, I think I could do email actually. And we'll show a text field. Um, name equals email. It will show a text field, but look at this. You know Chrome Autofill when you start like filling in a, <coughs> a form and your browser fills in for you because it saves your information. It then knows, since I said type equals email, it knows to um, fill this out put the email in here. Okay, so let's save and take a look somewhere. This is it. Okay, so so far I have name and yeah. Okay. Um, so let's finish the rest. Phone. Input type equals, I think you could do number, let's try that. Name equals phone. And then company, input type equals, what type would this be? So this would just be text, because it's just plain text, right? Anything that's text. Um, you just do text, name equals company, and then comes my checkbox, request phone call. Um, so the way to do a checkbox, as uh, you can see I never do this, I'm like literally popping off because I always, I'll show you what I use day to day. Okay, these are my fields so far. Looking good. 
Um, let's see. Yeah. Okay. The way you do a checkbox is like this. Input type equals checkbox. Right? Then you have to say value, meaning if someone checks this off, what's the value? Is it yes? Is it no? Is it what do you want it to be? Value is yes. Name equals. Um, and then I call it whatever like my group of checkboxes is, I call it that. So let's say I have a list of um, like some of you'll have a form and it'll say, are you interested in promotional emails, phone calls, um, packets sent to your door or whatever, and you can check off, right? So that um, group of things is called client interest or whatever, right? So I'll call, here it's, do you want a phone call? So I'll call it um, phone call. And that way it will show up in the email um, of the phone call thing this person checked off, yes. Okay, and then input type equals checkbox, value equals no. Name equals phone call. Is there a way to do either or? That's radio. That's radio buttons, right. Um, and radio is, this really should be a radio. Sorry, wait, I'll, I'll show you radio after. Radio is if I just click off yes, I can't do no. So really these should be radio buttons. Let's try it. But like when the response comes back, if it's a checkbox type, then multiple. Then you could show multiple ones. Oh. Right, here, let's do this as radio. Um, okay, these are my radio buttons. Now what did I miss out? Yes. Right. The, I missed out the labels of yes or no. So I did the top label request phone call, but what I need to do is right before the input, I could write yes or no. And now it's working as a radio. See so if you could only do one. Put the P, that's like not on a new line. Right, and if I put it in a P, it would be on a new line. And probably, usually, you would put it on a P because, whoops. Um, it will be easier for formatting in the end of the day. But for now, we'll just keep it like that because it's more clear. But if, let's say in the other one, we had the yes was on one line and the checkbox was next to it. So I probably, what I did is, P. I put everything in a P. That's probably what I did, like this. Oh. Sorry, was someone going to ask something else? Yeah, um, what, was the, what was there before the radio? Um, checkbox. I'll, I'll do a checkbox now. Okay, so this is the radio. And then what else could we say? We could say um, request phone call. Um, what are you interested in? Okay, and then we'll make, let's say we want them all in a new line, we'll make four checkboxes. Okay. Um, the first one will be promotional items, promotional emails, phone calls, discounts. Okay. So this is it. Now I need to actually add in the checkboxes, right? So it would be input type equals checkbox value equals uh, whatever I want, promotional items. And then name, what would be a good, something for the name? Something labeling interest. all of these. Right, like interest. Something labeling all the checkbox together. Interest. Okay? So that's my input tag. Um, and if I'm doing a lot, I would just copy and paste And just change the value. And then, exactly, I would just change the value because everything else is the same. Right? They're all input type equals checkbox. Value, let's make it wider so it's all on the same line. 
for promotional email, the value would be promotional emails. It's still the same name. It's still all the same list, right? Phone calls, type equals checkbox, value equals phone calls, and discount, value equals discounts. You only need the values for the checkboxes? Um, like right, for a regular input, you don't need a value. Is there a way to make a checkbox before the word? Yeah, you could just switch it. Yeah, you could just switch it like this. Right, right, exactly. Here, I just put it after. So I took the text. And I put it after the input, like that, which makes more sense. That's usually how it is. Um, discounts. Right, and then you see here you could check off as many as few as you want. Okay. Um, what was the next thing we had? So we just had another um, box, input type equals text, name equals website. Okay, now then this is called a select, right? Um, let me see exactly how you do that again. So basically I do my um, label type And then I have, it's like, remember we had like um, UL for a list and then the LI is inside? So it's kind of the same idea because really the drop down is a list. So I have select and then inside the select I have all the options and those are separate tags. Okay. Um, like this. These are my option tags. So it's like a list with list items inside. And in between the option tags, I would write um, what the options are, right? So like if, if it's like, you know, like when you're choosing all from all the states, your state, that's what it would be. So here it's like select what you're interested in. Uh, let's just pretend it's states, right? Option. New Jersey, let's call it state. So... I would do option, I would put New Jersey in here. And then again, it needs a value, right? It's kind of like an individual checkbox. So value would be NJ. Um, and the other thing I need is, I need a name for the overall list. So the name would be state, okay? And that goes in the select tag. Right. So, once. so now I'm going to make a bunch. Now that I have it set up, right? Because um, for the check boxes, I, I didn't have something enveloping all of them, so I had to put it in each input. This is a separate setup, so I could just say name the list in the select tag. That makes sense. Okay. So here I would just change the states inside, and this. Okay, and then I would change the values as well. Okay, so let me go to my form. And here's my drop down. So does it work if you like to press A to do the choices? You have to put that in. Yeah, I know that. That's a browser thing. Yeah, see? Like I'm pressing A or I'm pressing M. Um, so that's it. That's how to make a drop down. Here we had two drop downs, but it's the same thing. And the last thing is how to make a text area. Okay, so 
that's like where people add their message. Whoops. By the way, this happened to me a lot. Like sometimes I'll add something and I'll forget. It's not the, I'm always pointing to my screen like you could see. Um, it's not the end of the form here. Okay, and in here I put a text area. So text area is not input, it's text area. Um, I give it a name, so I'll call it message. And I could also give it a width and stuff, like by giving it rows and columns, but let's just do it simple for now. Okay. And text area you open and close. Okay, like with input, we just had one thing. There was no like open input, close input. With text area, you have an open tag and a close tag. Okay, and there's my text area here. Sorry? The reason why is because the input was in the P, but this is not in anything? Right, input doesn't have to be in the P. I just do that so each one will be in a separate line. You, so I just, you could also just do that using a break. Right. So you just didn't make a difference. Right. Um, just in the long run, it's easier. Right. Um, so, text, here's my text area. Okay, so there's a few things I could do to it. If I want to make it wider or, or um, have more height, then I adjust rows and columns. Um, so I would say rows equals, let's say, 9. And calls for columns equals 19. And that would adjust the size. Um, and then also I could write your message here in between the tags and then that will show up here. Okay. Um, um, so that is called placeholder text. Um, and that's like, that could basically be anything, right? Like. Um, the way I do a lot of my forms is like I'll have name in here and then I just get rid of the label, right? So to do that, I think you do it in the tag. Placeholder equals your message here. Um, like that, okay? And I could really, what I could really do is, like if I want to look fancy, I could get rid of the, ta the tag here. And in my input, inside the tag, I could say place holder equals um, your name. Like that. How do you okay, submit so, it? What? How do you submit it? Okay, so I'm going to show you how to submit in a minute. Usually I give a break at 9, but my baby's crying. So I'm going to go get my bottle, and let's take a two-minute break now. And then I'm going to show you submit and how, to, um, how I do forms now, which is much easier.
show you um, how to submit. Well, I was wondering, I did for the homework. I yeah. added, uh, I added the page, like with a portfolio of pictures. Yeah. So I was wondering, how do you do, like, if you click on a picture, it, like, goes up, and then I can, like, scroll through So it. you need um, JavaScript to do that to make it blow up? Like, to like call it a light, it's called a light box. Um, there's code that you could like add to your website. Yeah. Yep. Add light box to a website. Like when it pops up and takes up a full page. Actually, W3Schools has. It tells you how to do it. You can do it like that. Like that. Like so if you use Google W3 Google light box, light box and it will show you how to, yeah, and then you can scroll through it also. Yeah, I think a light box automatically has the pictures that you Something you plug into your website. Yeah, I think it has the pictures that you plug into your website. Okay, so I'm going to show you, this is, um, this is Gravity Forms. Um, it's for WordPress websites, which is what I use a lot. Um, basically, it's a really cool way to make forms, and this is what. What? Oh. Oh, did I stop recording? Am I still recording? Oh yeah, it's, it's still recording. Okay. Yeah. So we just recorded our break. Um, so what's it called? Um. It has very cool features. For example, you could make it integrate with like PayPal, so you could take payments, other stuff like that. Um, and I'll show you how you make a form in it. Free? No, um, I have a developer. You could get different licenses. There's a lot of free forms, by the way. I'm just showing you th this one because it's like I have a developer license, and I use it in tons of sites, so it's worth it for me. But you could get like just one, if you're doing it for just one site, it's $40. Um, 
This is not the only fat I make, by the way. It's just in my mind because she called me like a second before the pour started. Um, this is how I make forms. I have all the options of the type of fields I want, and I just drag and drop. So I want a single line text. I even, it even had like name. Um, phone. Email. This is like an add-in to WordPress? Yeah. So you use it on WordPress? Right. But if you use a different platform, there's like every platform has stuff like this. Checkboxes, um, radio buttons. Do you want to sync your word forms or? What? How, how did you get it on your word form website? Oh, that I'll show you. Um, how to do when we do WordPress. It's like called the plugin. There's somewhere you go. You go and add new. You upload a file. Oh. And stop, press install. That's it. And it's ready. Are there websites you don't use WordPress for? Um, yeah, e-commerce. Um, I'll use sometimes WordPress, sometimes Shopify, um, or Magento for like really heavy duty. Well, that's what my, my father uses that. Yeah, Magento. Uh, what? What? It's like a similar to WordPress. Magento is more for e-commerce, like for selling, um, and it's more heavy duty and a less user friendly backend. Um, but it has a lot also. Like what kind of site? Um, he sells uniforms. Right? Oh, okay. It's old items. Right, right, right. You could technically do that on WordPress or on Shopify. Um, there's pros and cons to each. Like, so if someone wants an e-commerce site, I ask them a lot of details and then I'll figure out which platform to use. I don't really use Magento. Um, I'm not like so familiar with it really. Like I've been in it, but I wouldn't consider myself expert in it um, but it is very powerful um, so what's it called okay so but so that that was the point of that was just for you to know once again that you don't necessarily have to sit coding in every every little form um, okay now the last thing is um, your submit button your submit button is also the input tag. The type is submit. Okay, so it knows it's a button. Value could be submit. And that's it. I added a few other stuff. Okay, I added a clear button, but that's fine. We don't need that. Or the value could be send. Whatever you do in value will actually show on the button. So it could be get in touch, whatever write that actually get in touch and here it is how do you connect it, you want to connect it? Ooh, that's a million dollar question so right now I press this and nothing happens because all it is is a button that's all it is it, there's no coding thing when I click this button make it go to make all these fields go to Ricky's email address so, um, let me show you how to do that. To you're also sending them to the screen. The screen doesn't say like that. What? The screen doesn't say like that. It says like, oh, you sent in your phone or whatever. Right, <laughs> right. So that's part of it that I need to code that in also. Um, so this form, I already, I coded in. Um, and right now I get this because, let me start from the beginning. Um, basically, what you need to do is use a code called PHP. PHP is a code that we, we talked about three types of code so far, right? HTML, which is the building blocks for your website. JavaScript, which is like behaviors on your website. Like, for example, if you want someone to click on an image and then it will pop up or you want that type of exciting stuff to happen. Um, and then PHP is 
um, for sure anything that involves servers and um, like managing data or more heavy duty actions on your site, right? So here, what you're doing is you're asking the server that the website is on to take this information and send it in an email to you. So that's not HTML code. HTML code is just the scale, how to build the skeleton of the site. That's PHP code, right? So basically what I do is I build a PHP file and I link it to the site. So that's what I did here. This is exact, this is exactly what I do. I say in the beginning of my form over here, I say action equals, what action do I want it to take? this form to take. I want it to follow my file called mail.php. Method is post. Post means I'm taking information from my site and I'm putting it somewhere else. Right? Then um, I'm going to show you the PHP file. I'm not teaching you how to build it, but I'm showing you um, how it's set up and really if you understand how it's set up you could tweak it based on whatever field you make so this is the mail.php this is the one that I built for this form so let's look at them side by side okay um, this it's like your open HTML. It's saying, okay, PHP code now, okay? Value equals name. I should really show you the, the source code because it's easier in a way, okay? For the, sorry, for the thing that's named name, post, meaning put the information name. Does that make sense? The red is all of your names or values in your HTML. Right. For the thing that's named email, post email, meaning post whatever people fill into the email field. And save it into the... And put it on the person's... And send it in an email to me. No, but... Let's I'll show you. This is what I get. The email variable is the post, whatever is saved in the email name. Right, whatever whatever somebody put in here. That, this is named email. That money sign name is the variable that's going to hold the right. value. Right. Same with phone. Um, company, right? Um, and then here, this was a ch these were check boxes, right? and they were both named call. So when it said call, post call, it would post any checkbox um, with the name call. So if someone clicks off yes and no, then it would post both. If they would click off none, it would post none. Okay, then website, website. Um, and then same here, priority. This was a drop down where people could choose low, normal, high, and emergency, right? And we labeled um, select name equals priority. We label we labeled this drop down priority. So post priority, meaning whichever one of these four, whichever one of these four that a person chooses, post. Okay. Um, the same thing for type. This is also a drop down, and then message post the message. Okay, this is all um, basically this is like instructions for the server. That's where your website is to send um, to like send that information. However, it sends information to your email. This is instruction showing how to format the email. Let me show you the email that I get.
This is the email that I get when I fill in the form. From phone company callback. Yes, remember this was a checkbox. My website, this is what I filled in. This was the priority that I selected. This was the type that I selected and this was the message that I put in. Okay, so it's saying, um, form content equals from, this is just text, name. And then this is just like, this is the PHP way of saying a break. Phone, phone, company, company. This is like all and everything here, okay? This whole thing here is just like the format. Then there's the recipient. What email address am I sending it to? This is my email address. What subject do I want to be in the header form? I wrote contact form. This is my subject right here. Um, where do I want to say it's coming from? I want to say it's coming from the field email. So I want to say it's coming from whatever the person filled in that their email is. And then, um, or I error, not sure what that is. Um, and then echo, thank you. And then a link to return home. This is what I want to show once per someone submits the form. Okay. Um, so basically, if you have a form. Your form and click on the send. Yeah, so now let me show you, let me tell you something about the form. Forms and PHP only works if it's on a server. So if it's on your computer, it won't work. So it's, I'll show you the difference, okay? Here I fill this, this is from my computer, just a file I saved on my computer. I'm just going to do autofill. When I press send, it just shows the PHP code because it can't execute it because it's not on a server. PHP needs a server. Um, but I did upload it to my server. And I put it in a folder on my server called form. And I call it form.html. So here it is on the server, okay? So when I fill it in, when I press send, it says thank you and a link to return home, which is back to the form right now. But I could choose, that was my link here a href equals form.html, but if I have like an index page on my site, I could link to whatever I want. Okay, and then I check my email. Sometimes it doesn't come right away. Um, sometimes the server takes a while to send, but this I just did uh, like today at 7.20. It came in, so we'll check back in like a minute. Um, and that's that for forms. That's how you do forms. So let's say you have your own form. You could basically you use this um, this layout, right? Like let's say I don't have all these fields. I just have name, email, phone, and company. But I called company. I gave it a different name. I gave it um, corporation. Then I would just edit these fields, and then I would make sure that I add that in my form content as well, right? So I would have my name, email, let's see, oh, email I don't have because email comes um, as the mail header saying it's whoever it's from, so you don't necessarily need email in there. Um, name, phone, instead of company, I would write corporation, And then take out the other field that I don't have, like that. Where, and then, you, where, is your, where do you keep your PHP file? Oh, okay, good point. So my PHP file, you see how you can, it's basically a link, right? 
So, gosh, so side by. See how here I did form action equals mail.php? That means I put my PHP, let me grab it, mail. I have this file from mail.php. I put it in the same folder as my media.html. Or if I want, I can make a new folder called PHP for all my different PHP files. I could put it in there. And then back in here by my form, I could say action equals PHP, PHP right? Forward slash mail. So when you have a form tag and then the action, it knows that the submit button is the action that it should look at the PHP file for. Yeah. What does yeah. the button look like again? Since it's type equals submit. Or whatever is going to be the submit. Exactly. It's going to do the action. On whatever the form. is submit is going to trigger the action on the form. Sometimes you, are, you have to fill out all the information. Like right, the that's um, required. Here it is, by the way. So here's that one that I just submitted. Okay. Um, required, I think you just do, um, say I want my name. I think you just do, I'm making this up. This is how I do it in a different uh, it's a plugin. Where's my form? This one, right? I'm just going to Google it because I don't even have a way of testing it unless it's this is the wrong form. Oh, this is the live one. Whoops. This is what happens when you're not organized. Is this the one we did today? Yeah, this is it. Let's say I fill out everything but the name. Take this out. Right, it's hard to test it because right, it's hard to test it because there's no PHP right now. But um, HTML to add required to form HTML input required attribute. Oh yeah, you don't do um, sorry, you don't do the star. You just do this required. Does it change anything? And then if someone tries to submit it without doing the name, it will say, it will pop up like yellow and say required. And if you want to like let people know that something's required, usually you could just do a star next to the label. Right? And that would show people that it's required. And then in your input, you would do required. Like that. Okay. All right, um, so that's it. Any questions on the form? Okay, so um, I'm going to send this all to you, and I'm going to show you homework, which is homework. Okay, so homework, you can build on your existing site. It's basically to do something, this idea. Okay, um, home page, right? This is a header tag with a nav tag inside. And then, oops. Oh, what page did I open? Oh, I opened about, sorry. This is a home page. A home page with a menu, a header, you are on home, a paragraph and a video. It could be embedded. You can try your own video. Um, 
an about us page with a list, a schedule. This is a table, so you can try to um, you can put that on your schedule page, and a contact us page with a form. Okay, now your form. I'm going to send you my form that I showed you with the mail. Um, and you can basically just copy it to, and do each input at, at a time to see how it shows up. And then put uh, you'll put the mail.php in the same folder. And then when you press send, I have to fill it in, I guess. When you press send, if it just shows your PHP code, then that means that you set it all up. I'm just trying because maybe Safari is different. I don't know. Yeah, you should get unless you're trying it in Safari or something. You should get like some kind of error or whatever, meaning it's trying to do the PHP but it's not working. Okay, so maybe instead of you all have the website you made from today. So instead of building a whole new website, um, I want you to practice especially the videos and the um, form. So on let's say the home page of your the site you have already, try to put in a video and an audio also. And then on the, did we have a contact page in homework? Yeah. We did, right? So on the contact page, try to build a form. So I'm going to send you the form, the mail.php, um, and the media file and I'm also going to send you like a mp4 video and an mp3 so that like in case you don't have one on your computer you'll easily have one to add in okay so I would say for now let's practice start practicing the adding the video and the um, audio to your home page I'm emailing everyone everything now I can finally stop the video. Um.